tonight on Colonial Sports Center. Hello and welcome everybody to Colonial Sports Center. I'm Cam Wickline. This is Casey Arrowine. Jam-packed week of Colonial Sports this week. Casey, what happened? Oh, there's been a lot going on. We've got playoff pictures for both the soccer teams. Big news there. You've got the men's basketball team. They're coming back. Madness just happened, and they play a big school in this country coming up tomorrow. There's a lot of other stuff going on, but we're just going to get right on into it, I think. Absolutely jam-packed. We are going to start on the most jam-packed Saturday I think Colonial Sports has ever seen. We head down to Midge McVale Fieldhouse for some rowing. This was an event that I actually drove past whenever I was going to cover a little bit of hockey this weekend. Like I said, jam-packed weekend of rowing. Here is what happened with the Colonial's four-man teams. Uh, they finished sixth and tenth out of ten teams. Uh, junior Aja Edwards was the coxswain of Robert Morris A, the team that finished higher of the two at Robert Morris teams. And sophomore Lillian Kritz was the coxswain of the Colonial's second team and on to the eight uh, eight man teams the Colonials finished fifth out of seven senior Aja Edwards was also the clock swain of this team not the greatest showing out of the rowing team coach Weber said and quote we've clearly got some work to do to close the gap they didn't perform to their expectations just kind of a rough showing out of the team yeah, that one not the best for the rowing team as it gets there. But that was earlier in the day. Now we're going to move on to about noon. And the men's soccer team were playing here in Moon at the North Athletic Complex against the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. The team has yet to win in the month of October as we go here to the North Athletic Complex. No wins versus Oakland all time as well. Here, we're going to go right into it. And once again, another loss for the Colonials. It was an 85th minute winner, winner for Donovan Phillip for the Grizzlies. A crushing loss for the Colonials. It's eight. They are trying desperately to get into the playoffs, which we will get into later. Michael Sly for the Grizzlies had nine saves against the Colonials, which won him Horizon League Defensive Player of the Week. And his performance really is what sealed that loss for the Colonials. Heading over to the island for some women's hockey. This is the game that I was covering when I saw what was happening with rowing. They took, a, they took on superpower Clarkson, the number seven team in the country. They lost 6-1 to one in the game on Friday night. This is Saturday night's game where they actually managed to keep it very close, and that was big thanks to Maggie Hatch. Even the box score doesn't show what she did. She was absolutely outstanding uh, in this game. RMU's big difference, they had eight penalties in this game. They're not going to win against a team this good making that many mental mistakes because that is actually the only way they gave up those two goals that they did give up was on the uh, power play. So RMU, if they can clean it up, actually prove they've got a lot of talent if they can keep up with a team like this. To keep up with the number seven team in the nation with eight penalties is just impressive. Now we're going to move on to women's soccer. They played three hours after the men's, once again at the North Athletic Complex. They were playing against the IUPUI Jaguars. And you can see that one was a loss to the Colonials. Still winless all time against IUPUI. RMU would stick at mid-table at 13 points after that, that loss as they look to have their playoff picture change. And you can see there it was just a one nothing game. It actually wasn't a defensive performance really for the Jaguars after they scored that early goal in the ninth minute. It was just back and forth, no park the bus. The Colonials just could not finish it off. That IUPUI team, a team that finished higher than them in the standings, they got a chance that they might get some revenge. We'll get into that a little bit later. Now on to volleyball where they went to the UPMC Event Center to take on Cleveland State University. Volleyball has won two of their last three games. Instead of a graphic, we got some highlights for you guys. We're going to pick it up, pick it up in the first set when these highlights get rolling. The, in the first set, the Colonials, they didn't actually go very well to plan, but the Colonials struggled, the Colonials struggled a little bit in this uh, in this game, it was three to one or three nothing. Here we go. Highlights rolling for you. Pick it up in the first set. It's going to be a hard serve, and Jaden Hawkman has a fantastic dig over to Ashley Wallen for the set, and Osra Eric for the kill. Colonials make it seven five. They would end up falling pretty big in this one. Twenty five to twelve in the first set. Now over to the second over to the second set. Just watch this bump set spike. We got a long one here. Bump. 
set, spike. It's going to keep going. Bump, set, spike. Oh my gosh, it's going to keep going. Bump. Here we go, set. Here we go, spike block. Oh my, Colonials, after a long back and forth, they get that one there. Makes it 11 to 9. Colonials would come back in the second set, but we're going to see the rest of that in a little well, bit. Well, yeah, because I'm going to have to interrupt you right there because in the middle of all this action, on this jam-packed Saturday, men's hockey would play their second game against the Holy Cross Crusaders. And you can see here a 3-3 tie after the Colonials lost the day before. Colonials would win on the shootout, and Chad Veltri once again, 46 saves to keep the Colonials in it. What happened here with this game? Colonials were down 2-0 after the first period, but would claw back, scoring two goals in the third period themselves, and they would tie this game and end up getting the win in the shootout. Chad Veltri continues to be impressive. He's third in the entire country in saves at 174, fourth in save percentage at .946. Impressive stuff to keep Colonials in games like these. Once again, the Colonials will play here tomorrow to play Bentley. Hockey was a big deal, but hey, why don't you not interrupt me when I'm talking about volleyball? Because the volleyball game is still going on. We're going to go right back to the end of the second set. Like I told you, it's a tight one. Right now it is 22-20. RMU trying to make a comeback. And Jaron Kohler and Madison Butler are going to come up with a block on the Colonials. That makes it 23-20 against the Colonials Cleveland State leading. They would end up taking this set 25-22. Going on to the third set. Lakin Voss, this is going to be a name you're going to hear a lot. Lakin Voss is going to come up with a kill here for Cleveland State. There it is. Oh, never mind. That's my bad. You're going to see here. Lakin Voss comes up with a kill. She was devastating all night. Had 14 kills for Cleveland State. As you see there, RMU's defense just simply couldn't handle it. This made it 6-0. And here we go again. You're going to see her one more time. She was just devastating for Cleveland State. Honestly, the reason they probably won this game, RMU falls three sets to none. Yeah, when you're hitting it that hard with that type of heat, it's hard for any team to stop those shots. And when we come back after this, we're going to talk about the playoff picture for men's team as men's team looks to sneak in in the most impressive way possible. See you right after this. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center here. We're going to talk about the playoff picture in a little bit for both the soccer teams. But first, we're going to jump right back into some volleyball as they would play against the Wright State team. And this one, once again, the Colonials trying to get some wins. They've never won against Wright State and earlier in the season lost 3-1. to one. They're looking to go on a run to end the season. Let's see what happened here. And you can see here the Colonials 3-1 once again lost to Wright State. It was pretty impressive how they lost the first set 25-7 and came back to win the next set 25-21. 
Once again, though, they could not finish it off, and they would lose 3-1 here. Rosina Esposito, 12 kill kills, 11 digs for the Colonials. But Katie Meyer for Wright State, 48 assists at the setter. Jenny Westling, 25 digs. Was so impressive once again there. Colonials volleyball team just cannot hold out on these wins. Volleyball had a little bit of a rough year this year, but women's soccer is doing the exact opposite. They went up to Farmers National Bank Field to see if they could get a win, and with this win, they would get their first ever berth in the Horizon League postseason. Let's see how they did. This is their last regular season game, and we're going to pick it up early in the first half. The Colonials defense did let a little bit of a mistake here as Taylor Berry gets through the defense, takes a shot from pretty deep, and there's a nice save there by the goalie. You guys are going to see an instant replay of this of Bri Brianna Taylor makes a beautiful play, or Brianna Murray, sorry. She's she makes a beautiful play. Here and what a save there on the bottom left corner by the Colonial goalkeeper. Yeah, if the Colonials are going to want to do well in playoffs, they're not going to be able to let stuff like that, but... On to the next, Kairu Hiyashi takes a corner here, and you're going to see a massive mashup between players, and somehow, Christy Kiana is going to come up with a goal. I don't know how she did it. Massive mashup of players, but she's going to get her first goal ever. She's a defender, so she doesn't usually come down into the box, except for set pieces like this, and you see, she just manages to sneak it right in through there. It, it was went her. through the goalkeeper's hands, I think, and she was able to find herself in and sneak it in. Now on to the second half. Paloma Swankler is going to come up the near side. She's going to look to cross, gets it into the defense. Defense tries to clear, and then here's a name we just said, Kyrie Hayashi takes a shot and a beautiful save there by Brooklyn Kirkpatrick. She goes all the way, all the way horizontal, makes a beautiful save, trying to go into the top left corner is Kyrie Hayashi, and Kirkpatrick just says no way. Stop me if you've seen this before, but Kairi Hayashi takes another corner. Another mashup here of players, except this time, instead of it being Christy Kiana, it's Paloma Swankler. She had a fantastic year last year as a freshman. She's had a little bit more limited role this year, but she gets the goal there for the Colonials. They end up winning this one 2-1, to one, and they do make the postseason for the first time in program history. And now that they're in the postseason, we can get a look at their playoff picture and what the path is that they'll have to go through to win the Horizon League. And you can see here, uh, they you can see number four seeded. They'll play Wright State here at the Sports Complex, Robert Morris, 1 p.m. And it's going to be a tough journey. They have, if they win this game, they'll have to play IUPUI, who they just launched against, but we'll look for that revenge. And then that's where it get, it'll get really tough. You know, if they end up playing Wright State, they or they beat Wright State early in the season 4-2, so let's see if they can win that one. And if they do play Milwaukee, the number one seed, that one was a bad loss, 3 nothing. If everything goes chalk, they would actually end up playing Milwaukee, like you just said, they lost 3 nothing. That was, a, that was a big game for them. Ended up losing that one. All three teams ahead of them in the standings in the postseason, they all lost to, including the very recent loss on senior day, one nothing against IUPUI. So Colonials have a tough journey ahead of them, but it, all the, if they've proved anything, it's that they keep getting better after what happened the last couple years. Chris Shaw has taken this team from being a team that was honestly the laughing stock of the Horizon League now being a real force especially compared to last year just the improvement in general has been incredible to see and what they'll need to do to get all the way through the tournament they're gonna have to score some more goals because the, while the defense has been good it's got they got to put more in the net you can see in that last game right there they put two impressive goals in the net and that's what's gonna have to be if they want to win the horizon league yeah but now on to the men's team who isn't in the playoffs yet but they 100 percent control their own destiny their next two games are against Detroit Mercy and Cleveland State, who you can see here, they are very close to in the standings. They're, in fact, very close to Green Bay and Purdue Fort Wayne as well. All teams, they are within three points of, remember, you get two points for a win in this, or my apologies, you get, yeah, three, three. points for a win, sorry about that. So that means they're within striking distance of the third seed in the Horizon League, meaning this is still 100% anyone's game if they go Saturday against Detroit Mercy and then back here for their senior day against Cleveland State. These are going to be two huge games for the Colonials to close out If the season. team can win both these games, they'll not only be in the playoffs, but they have a chance to get a top three seed. And that's so impressive. What's interesting here is Detroit Mercy, three points above the Colonials right now, and they would play against them very soon. Colonials are second in goals finished and third in goals allowed. Very impressive. They're out of the playoff picture. Detroit Mercy in those stats, dead last and second to last. And so that's what's been for Colonials. They haven't been able to fin finish out games, and they need to do that 
for these next two games if they want a shot at the playoffs. Yeah, all it means is that what they've been doing has been working. You would just hope that eventually the stats are going to correct themselves. And that what it's looking like is the Colonials are going to somehow find their way into the playoff picture. The issue is this last month they have not had a win in October. And so they need to pick up their prior form at the start of the season if they want to sneak into the playoffs here. Now, that's what's going on with the soccer teams. If you guys want to see what's about to happen in one of the biggest games in the Event Center's history coming up this weekend, or this Friday, sorry, we're going to show you what's happening with that when we come back here on CSC. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We have this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back. I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at Feeding America. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Before break, I told you guys all about what was going to happen with this big game here on Friday. Cam Cariola has, has all the details about this charity match, exhibition game, not necessarily a regular season game, no matter what. It's Penn State coming to the event center, a huge Big Ten team. Cam Cariola has all the details. The Robert Morris men's basketball team returns to the UPMC Event Center this weekend as they take on Penn State in an exhibition game for Coaches vs. Cancer. I think you're always excited when you get to this time of year and you know games are close. You're probably a little bit tired of competing against your teammates every day on practice. So to be able to see people in a different uniform uh, is always really exciting. Obviously, be able to do it in front of what we hope to be a great crowd will be another level of, of um, excitement for us. And then having a Big Ten team come into the event center here uh, to be able to play us for a great cause uh, makes it even that much more exciting. This game is more than an exhibition for the Colonials as one of their own recently joined the fight against cancer. Um, Matt Sweet, who's our, uh, one of our assistant coaches in March of last year, was diagnosed with um, a small tissue cancer. And uh, as of September of this year, he's been considered cancer-free, diagnosed cancer-free. And we were in communication with the coaches at Penn State. Uh, Jimmy Martelli, who was a former Robert Morris assistant coach here when I first started, uh, is on staff there. And we started to talk about the idea of doing this game. Uh, one of my other assistants, Dave Fedor, kind of came up with the, the idea of going to do this to honor uh, Coach Sweet's fight, as well as you know, raise some more money for cancer research in the American Cancer Society. Coach Tool in the Colonial are excited to face off against Penn State and will use this opportunity to see where their team stands prior to the season. You know, on the court, obviously, we know we're going to be facing a, a very good opponent in uh, Penn State. You know, they have a brand new team, uh, 10 new guys from the team last year that went to the NCAA tournament, a new coach, uh, but a lot of guys that have had a lot of success. You know, Puff Johnson, who's a Moon Township native, you know, played in the national championship game for North Carolina a couple years ago. You know, a lot of experience, a lot of winning, a lot of understanding. Um, and a great test for our team to see where we stack up, to see how we can perform, to see where we're at offensively and defensively, um, and to do it in a really good, exciting environment. I think we'll just kind of add to uh, the litmus test that this is for us. When asked about the preparation for this week, Coach Tool said it will be the same as always. You know, getting guys comfortable with the terminology we use in terms of how we're identifying players on the opponent, opponent, opposing team, some of the keys that we'll have offensively and defensively that we need to be able to execute against Penn State. So it's a great run, a great dress rehearsal for all the things that are associated with our normal game prep. 
this is the first time the Coaches vs. Cancer exhibition game comes to Robert Morris University, and Coach Tool hopes to see it happen more often. Um, obviously, this is a, a unique circumstance here with Coach Sweet's situation and, and the battle with cancer that he had. Uh, obviously, if these are things that arise in the future, you know, we'd love to continue to do some things on the charitable side you know, for different causes that might affect our program or our team. Opening tip-off will be Friday at 7 p.m. at the UPMC Event Center. Tickets cost $10 and proceeds will go to the Coaches vs. Cancer Fund. For Colonial Sports Center, I'm Cameron Macariola reporting. Thank you, Cam. And what a great event this is, not just because it's such a big team like the Penn State Nittany Lions coming in, but because of the event itself, especially with Coach Sweet's story with him beating cancer. It just should be such a big event, it's such a hype event. Students and fans all around will be there, and it'll be crazy to watch. I can tell you personally, even though I'm technically part of student media, as a fan, I am so excited to go to this game. I got a couple buddies coming in. They're Penn State fans, so they've been talking a little bit of heat, you know, but... It's going to be a big game. It's obviously for a great cause with the coaches versus cancer. I'm looking forward to it. From what uh, Cam McCarriola's package said, the coaches and the players are all looking forward to it. This is going to be an elite atmosphere, and I truly just cannot wait. I mean, Penn State was a top 32 team in the country last season. And fun fact, actually, RMU has actually played Penn State in basketball before all the way back in 2009. Colonial's went to State College, lost 80-61. to Hopefully we'll see a different uh, different outcome this time. You know, Colonials lost so many pieces. Penn State brought in a lot of pieces. So it would be so interesting to see how that game plays That's out. That's actually one of the things I'm really looking forward to seeing about this game. Penn State got a new coach, and Penn State got 10 new players onto this team. So even though they made it to the round of 32 last year, this is simply just not the same team. Even Penn State doesn't know what Penn State has yet. Same thing with the Colonials, though. The Colonials had a pretty good season last year, obviously, you always have higher expectations than just winning a single playoff game, but that was the first playoff game they've won in the event center. So higher expectations this year. This is a, this is going to be a very good game. Yeah, interesting note. Even Penn State just had a chance to come in. Puff Johnson, formerly of North Carolina and formerly of here in Moon, Pennsylvania. His hometown was here, and now he's coming back home to play against the Colonials in college. What a story that will be. If you know, we'll see how much playing time he gets, and what an event this will be. And now we're going to move on to, to another event. It was the golf team's very last collegiate outing of the fall season. We're going to get right into how they fared in this last meet. And you can see here the OBX Intercollegiate. Robert Morris finished ninth in their last, last meet, 889 plus 37 on that one. It was over three days of this week. Went into the final round of this event in fifth place, but on the last day, just couldn't really pull through. You can see with this whole graphic here, hopefully Navy in 14th is a little more accurate when it matters because that is just a little worrying to see for my safety, to be honest. Hey, I'm not gonna disagree with you, but you did mention that Robert Morris came into the last day in fifth place. That was because they actually had, as a team, they had their best day on the second day. Josh Nagy, who you're going to see tied for th uh, 43rd, who was fourth on the Robert Morris team, he shot he shot plus two on the second day. Peyton Iverson, who you're going to see second on Robert Morris, he went plus one on the second day. So a lot of teams, a lot of people on Robert Morris had their best day on the second day. They couldn't exactly close it out on the third day, except for Logan Hess, who you can see there finishing third on Robert Morris. He shot plus two on the final day, which was kind of their saving grace. Yeah, and that's all that's going to be for the golf team in this fall. You'll see them once again in the spring, and you'll see us right after this with your top five plays. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Today, we face an unprecedented crisis. Tens of millions of refugees have been forced from their homes. But you can make a difference. Turn disruption and despair into hope and opportunity. Even small amounts make a big difference. Provide shelter, support, or jobs in your community. The more we understand, the greater sense of belonging we create. Act now. Visit supportcrisisrelief.org. 
I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center, and we know why you're still here. You want to see these top five plays, and we're going to get right on into it. We've got some good stuff this week. We're first going to start out with the, that women's soccer game against Youngstown State here at number five. Well, as you can see, not women's soccer. This is women's basketball. But, and there was that one. Women's soccer, it was a great, great save. It was that save you saw earlier by Brianna Murray from that long shot by Regan Lavigna after she ran through a few defenders. It was a wild save in that bottom left corner. And now we're just going to go right into our games to watch right here. For me, it's that game we just talked about. It's the men's basketball game against Penn State. Look at that photo of Josh Corbin. Beautiful. And that's who my player to watch is. He had 10 and a half points per game last season. He was huge, the senior guard. Active leading returner for leading scorer for the Colonials was 640 in his career after all those big losses. He's dangerous from three. He had 93 last season and was clutch in games down the stretch. And then for Penn State, you had all those transfers come in that we talked about. And undoubtedly their biggest one was Ace Baldwin Jr. Transferring in from BCU last season, he was the A-10 player of the year and defensive player of the year. Super, super impressive impressive was top top in the nation in assists he led VCU to two NCAA tournament appearances appearances and this once again as we said all this time will be an exciting game here tomorrow at the UPMC event center Casey I think you might be kind of fake for not putting the moon township native as your player to watch I mean I'm just I'm just saying I, there's a reason that that he transferred and so it will be I, I'm just saying we'll be watching him <laughs> but not because of his basketball play that's fair that's fair my game to watch though is the women's soccer game in the playoffs they take on Wright State this one's here it won't be at the moon athletic town it won't be at the athletic complex it'll actually be uh, a little bit a little bit down the road but my player to watch is Renee Moorbacher. She had seven goals and seven assists this season. She just absolutely lit it up for the Colonials, got hot early and just sustained it. Olivia Mace for Wright State. She's going to be the person to watch. Not a ton of goals. They, this team actually doesn't score a lot. Very defensive team. So the reason she's going to be the player to watch without having a ton of goals, she facilitates a lot. You can see with the four assists there. She's, the, she's what really gets their offense going. She's going to spread it around. This is going to be a big game for the Colonials. Yeah, Renee Moorbacher is absolutely who everyone needs to watch in an important game like that. She's been the creator. She's been the scorer. And she's been everything for that Colonials offense. Yeah, she's been very good. But one of the things I want to ask you about the women's ho or soccer team, sure. what got them here? Because as we saw, Renee Moorbacher has been very good, but soccer is more than just a one-man show. Yeah, so it was really the start of the season first was such impressive performances that they could build on. And really a lot of it has been that defense. And the defense has been so good. Brianna Murray, so important in goal, as we saw with her saves earlier. And Brianna Moorbacher, of course. You had Lydia Duca, who has struggled a little bit recently, but she was so good. And so the offense does need to pick it up more. So that midfield and defense, really the midfield, that's been controlling games, keeping it good throughout, and keeping – keeping possession, keeping the Colonials in these games, not just the defense, not just the offense, the midfield with Renee Moorbacher, has, that's what's been the most impressive for me. Yeah, so we saw earlier that with Robert Morris being fourth, there's three teams ahead of them. They lost to all three teams they played in the right, that are ahead of them when they played them in the regular season. What do they need to change to ensure that they can be raising a trophy at the end of the season? They just need to score more. Then they have to figure out a way how to do that. It has to be different new creative passing moves it has to be you know, it has to it has to be more unique because th right now they're kind of getting a little predictable at times but you know if they can maybe get some overlapping balls from the wing backs if they can uh, if they can get just some more balls in the box if they can do a different formation and then the colonials can possibly win the horizon league i'm looking forward to watching that game i know you are big game against penn state this weekend huge week for the colonials thank you for watching here on c